Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our session on uh, using OpenStack with Open Daylight. Um, I'm up here with my, uh, my friends and colleagues, Brent, Kyle, and Madhu. Um, they're gonna t we're all going to kind of tag team this a little bit. And uh, we're going to hope to be a little bit more, more uh, efficient with our time than we've been so far. So welcome. Um, I'm going to do the introduction. Um, talk a little bit about what what we're trying to accomplish, and then these guys are going to do the heavy lifting. So with that, oh by the way, um, if people have questions, um, we can do it in we can do it in line as long as it doesn't get too long because we, we're already a little bit behind. So we'll try to do it in line though. Okay. So what what we are hoping everybody walks away with is an overview of how OpenStack and Open Daylight can integrate, and these guys have done fantastic work on that. A demo of bringing up an, a multi-node uh, OpenStack environment, and also a demo of bringing up Open Daylight with OpenStack Neutron for virtual networks. So that's what we're hoping you'll you'll get out of this. Um, and I'm going to try to keep this part short because I think the demo is the is the real cool part. So, how many people know what Open Daylight is? Okay. Well, uh, okay, that's really good to hear. Um, this is sort of a mom and apple pie kind of slide, but basically, we're you know we're trying to create a, a a platform, not a not a not a point solution, but a platform, um, an open source platform for um, SDN applications, right? And so that people can, so that people can build a wide range of applications on top of it. We're trying to get broad industry ex acceptance, build a community basically of users, vendors, um, developers, and um, have that community be uh, thriving, growing. And we've heard we heard a lot about that this morning. It's it's pretty key. Community is key. And so, um, again, it's a community. I talked about the platform aspects of it. Um, there's uh, common abstractions northbound. We've been working a lot on that. Um, and uh, there's some implementation details about how those northbounds are, uh, are connected to the southbounds or intermediated. Um, programmable network services, um, applications, and, what el <laughs> and whatever else we need to make it work, which is, you know, probably nothing. So, oh. Okay, so on to Kyle. Thanks, Dave. So Brent and I are both going to talk about this. I, I think we've, we've alluded, or at least I alluded to this earlier. There was an earlier discussion. This is, this is a more detailed diagram of, of how the Open Daylight integration with OpenStack looks. The, the key points on, on this diagram are, if you look on the north, the very north side up there, you can see that there's an ML2 plugin. And so the open daylight integration on the OpenStack side is a mechanism driver for ML2. That essentially just passes the REST API calls, the Neutron API calls that people are making down into open daylight. So those, those API calls then show up in open daylight in the northbound, this northbound API, API layer, which is the open daylight uh, Neutron service, I think is what it's called up there, inside open daylight. And so th that, that service essentially provides a mechanism for for things southbound of it to register for those. And one of the things that registers is the OVSDB Neutron application there. And with that, I'll pass it over to Brent. Hey, guys. Uh, so like Kyle said, we've got uh, uh, an abstraction, basically, for Neutron API calls. Uh, there's, there's a handful of southbound protocols that uh, you can talk to the data path with. So we kind of start getting into the SDN world pretty heavily here. Uh, so with what we're going to demo today, we're using two main protocols. We're using OpenFlow 1.3 and we're using OVSDB, so Open vSwitch database protocol. Uh, so Ben Pfaff developed that with um, uh, Adam Nasir. It's you know, a, a core component of Open vSwitch. Uh, so right now we have overlays implemented. So if you have a bunch of, you know, a handful of hypervisors, uh, a full mesh of tunnels is set up. Um, we're what our what our roadmap is is we're working pretty pretty hard on services because I mean if you kind of step back and look at SDN the value prop of SDN early on is uh, doing middle box functionality so the services you know are kind of long tail directly into network function virtualization uh, carriers are definitely uh, have a need for simplifying and uh, both on opex and capex so. Uh, 
the first service we're working on is uh, security. Uh, we're looking to integrate IP table functionality down into OpenB switch. Uh, we're almost done with that. And um, you know, any feedback on services that's, inter that's interest from the community, we'd love to hear it. Uh, that's how we prioritize. It's totally community driven. Uh, so this was our release, and Madhu is going to do a demo today showing flavors of OpenStack yep. and the integration. Uh, All right, guys. Um, um, I'm planning to give a simple demo. <laughs> it's not as simple, actually. Uh, uh, it's going to cover a few components out there. Uh, uh, of course, we have OpenStack with our source release. We only use DevStack for the demonstration. Uh, Open Daylight, we have the hydrogen release this February. So this code is based on hydrogen. Uh, we are going to have OpenFlow 1.3 and 1.0 in combination because Open Daylight supports multiple protocols, as we saw in the previous slide. Uh, we support 1.3, 1.0, and uh, in future, it'll be all the OpenFlow support as well. Uh, we talk OBSDB to the OpenV switch. Uh, and of course, we use OBS, and uh, everything's written in uh, Federal Linux now. Uh, the, the, when you're thinking about putting a demo together for this audience here, uh, we were thinking about uh, really how to differentiate from a typical OpenStack demonstration, right? In a typical OpenStack demo, we have agents running on the uh, compute nodes, and uh, you know, we form L2 overlay network, and you know, we show things work, like pinging, and we're all happy with that, right? Uh, so when it, comes, when it comes to open daylight integration, we thought we'll do a bit more uh, to highlighting what open daylight can do a bit more than what we can do on an, on an open stack overlay uh, integration. So for, in order to showcase that, we took a use case uh, that's available today in open stack where uh, when, you, when you launch a, uh, you want to launch an instance, VM instance, you see there's a flavor where you can say, you know what, I want so much CPU, so much compute power, you want, uh, so much uh, hard disk, and you say a flavor for compute and uh, the compute resources, and you launch a VM, right? So we have nano, mini, micro, whatever we have. Uh, but we don't see a network as a resource in the OpenStack UI, right? Uh, so we thought, yeah, why not we take it as a use case here and uh, do a flavors for networking, right? So let's, let's do a flavor for networking and see how open, open Daylight can assist in uh, providing a network flavor for OpenStack. So that's going to be the overall objective of the demo. Uh, in order to do that, we, we wrote a few apps, as you can see here. So from an open daylight perspective, OpenStack is an app, <laughs> even though they are in OpenStack uh, 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 conference here. That's because open daylight is a, is a generic SDN controller uh, on which anything that co talks to the open daylight via the Northbound REST API, it's an app for that. Since the integration, as you can see here, the open daylight controller talks to the OpenStack Neutron to Northbound API. So we categorize it as an app, even though one of the most important app for open daylight, of course. Uh, then we have flavors to enhance the network flavor functionality for OpenStack. Uh, the, we have the policy-based traffic steering. Uh, the way we have achieved this one is, we, we have the open, we have overlay network using uh, VXLAN and GRE. And uh, in the demo, we have uh, a simulated uh, fabric Right, a spine and leaf architecture, and we are using open, open daylight and, op, and open flow to do traffic steering on the fabric. Right, so we are trying to tie in the overlay tenant traffic to the underlay fabric uh, traffic steering to showcase that uh, with open daylight we can control the resources usage, usage on the on the underlay as well on the fabric, while we can configure the, op the overlay uh, by OpenStack to state a given tenant wants a specific you know, SLA, SLA guarantees, right? So that's the idea. So the, the traffic sharing is going to do that for you. And we have uh, the Hyperglance and Delux. They are few apps on the controller, which essentially does uh, network visibility into uh, UI management purposes, right? So we, we, we'll go over all, all the details in this demo. Uh, this is going to be the topology which I will be demonstrating now. I have a very simple setup. Everything is running in my laptop, right? So I cannot trust the Wi-Fi. So everything is running in my laptop, including the underlay, uh, plus, uh, the uh, uh, fabric. We use Mininet as an underlay uh, simulation tool. And we are going to control that using OpenFlow. 
and we have OpenStack compute nodes using DevStack. The compute node one is going to be the is the OpenStack con DevStack controller, and uh, we have a few networks here. As you can see, the the purple one is the management network which we use to connect to the controller. So, as you can see here, the the OpenStack controller node will talk to the compute con the OpenDLA controller using REST APIs, using management network. Similarly, the OpenDLA controller will talk to these switches, OBS switches, using OBSDB and OpenFlow, again through the management network. And the data network is used for actually forwarding the data, right? The, it carries the overlay traffic. Uh, so the reason I'm showcasing this one is you will start seeing that we will start to uh, 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 traffic engineer the underlay network on, on the data path. That's the idea. So uh, we will have a silver flavor and a bronze flavor. And we'll show that a silver flavor traffic takes a different path based on the cost availability. So we'll configure stating, hey, for silver flavor, we want a least cost path. Uh, so you'll get a least cost path. While uh, you want bronze flavor, you'll get a shortest path, you'll get a shortest path here. So as you can see here, uh, having a shortest path is not a big deal on an, an open daily, an open flow controller, really. But we are talking about an overlay traffic, a traffic that is going overlay, how to make use of the underlays Resources. That's the key benefit out of it, right? So a controller like OpenDLA can deliver it for you uh, because it can control both the overlay and underlay networks at the same time, right? That's, that's the overall objective of this demo. Uh, let me switch over to the the nerdy <laughs> uh, backend. All right. So uh, is it visible to all you guys? I mean, at the back, is it okay? Or should I increase the font? It's fine. I see one, two uh, offenses. That's all, that's all I need. Uh, so we have uh, four windows here. Uh, we have the dev stack running here. Uh, these are dev stack control node and the compute node. And by the way, guys, all is live demo here. And those who do live demos know everything can go bad, right? So uh, I hope things will work fine uh, because it's really live at, at this point here. Uh, so we have the co compute nodes, uh, control node and compute node running up here. And uh, this is the mini net. Uh, Console I have, and this is op this is Open Daylight uh, backend. Let's uh, I, I, for interest of time, I actually created these uh, uh, overlays. So I'm just going to showcase how it's been programmed and everything. So if you do the Keystone tenant list, you will see the tenants that we are going to demonstrate here. Uh, so for for this purpose, we have created two tenants: Pepsi tenant and a Coke tenant. Uh, so the way we are going to showcase is that a Coke tenant will have a GRE overlay network, while a Pepsi will have a VXLAN overlay. All these are actually uh, orchestrated by the open delay controller. Uh, because uh, in the previous talk, if you guys were there, Kyle was talking about when we use open daylight, we don't use any agents on the compute nodes, right? All we have is a OBS, which is typical uh, configuration, right? So OBS is running on the agent, and that is it, right? Uh, on the control node, yes, we are running. We are using the DHCP agent and L3 agent. But on the compute nodes, it's just pure OBS. And uh, you'll see that since it's pure OBS, there's no other intelligence running on the compute nodes. The open delay controller takes care of programming all the overlay traffic for you. So since we support VXLAN and GRE, I took GRE as a use case for Coke and VXLAN for the Pepsi. These are two tenants here. Um, and we all like a nice UI, and we have a nice UI as well here. Um, Open Daylight has a decent UI on the, uh, on the uh, inbuilt on the Open Daylight itself. Uh, you can see here that Open Daylight, it's actually learned the entire network, including the overlay and underlay. Uh, you can see the spine and leaf, they are the underlay uh, thing that I created. So if you look at the mininet that is running here, uh, that's not mininet. Here, this is Mininet. So those who know Mininet, uh, they all will appreciate this console where we have two leaves and two spines running here, and they are connected, interconnected as a, in a, uh, a spine leaf architecture. And uh, the Open Daylight has learned these, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the fabric, and also it learned the, since it orchestrated the uh, overlay network, you can see that we, we learned the BR tunnels of the control node and BR tunnel of the compute node. Ah, dude, battery man, help me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, all right, thanks. Yeah. 
Uh, all right, I'll be fast. Uh, uh, so the, the, as you can see here, the, the, the link that you see here is actually the, the tunnel, GRE tunnel that we have established. So the way to see it is, let's click on this link, you'll see that, there you go, there's a GRE tunnel right here. It's established by, by the uh, OSDB neutron code running on, on open daylight. If we refresh, I should see one more, there you go. That's for another one is the VXLAN. So I just created the VXLAN network. So if you see here, we'll see one GRE tunnel for one tenant another be excellent tenant for another tenant. So I have all created right here. Thanks, man. All right, there you go. So, so we have, as you can see here, the open daylight, we have learned these uh, tunnels as well. So we, we give a unified view for the management, uh, the guy who's managing the network, both overlay and underlay, and we can start playing with things, okay? As you can see, we see all the switches that is available there, the overlay, underlay switches, and everything. Uh, and, of course, we have the Neutron UI here. Uh, the Neutron UI, see, the Neutron UI is uh, s simple, right? I mean, it looks at the network as a simple layer to bridge, right? It doesn't really care about, hey, we use a OLA tunnel or you know, whatever, right? Because according to Neutron, it's just one VXLAN ne network. It has two VMs being launched on that, and that's it. It doesn't care about, hey, how it is actually in implemented on the on the network, and that's the power of Neutron as well, right? Where keep it simple for the operators while do the heavy lifting by the plugins, right? So Open Daylight is one plugin which does that. Similarly, we have three or four plugins that uh, Kyle was talking about in the previous talk. And the actual heavy lifting of launching these two VMs, and as you can see, one more thing is, the VMs here, even though they are like next to each other, actually they are launched in two different compute nodes, right? One compute node is having one VM, another computer is having another VM. They are separated across this fabric, right? In, in this case, uh, let me go back to my thing, right? So one VM is launched on one of the uh, node here. Another VM is launched here. They are separated by uh, the whole data center, really, right? Fabric leaf architecture. And we actually have a tunnel across which is forwarding the traffic. And all these are done by the open daylight, so. Now let's go get back to the context again. Uh, so I promised about the flavors application where now uh, doing this is, the, is very common, right? I mean, uh, having a VM launched and uh, creating tunnels across multiple nodes, it's common uh, in any plugin that we see today. But the specialty of Open Daylight we are showcasing here is that we have an app called Flavors App, which again is built on top of uh, the, uh, OpenStack uh, UA framework. As you can see, it's very similar. Uh, uh, and uh, the Flavors App, provides this uh, way to configure flavors. So in this case, we configured a, a flavor called silver and bronze, and uh, the bronze flavor does the uh, shortest path first algorithm, while silver does the you know, uh, least cost path algorithm. It applies on the, on the underlay, and we apply the policy to, you know, part number the UI, you're supposed to build a string here. So the silver is the Pepsi tenant, and. Uh, the other string is the bronze tenant. So if you do a tenant uh, list, you'll see the same here. As you can see here, Coke is 89cc and uh, Pepsi is D8, whatever, right? So this is that. So this is what the, the Flavors app does. It configures it. Using the Northbound API of the controller, it configures the uh, underlay. And now when we, uh, when you look at the actual flows, uh, where am I? Here you go. So we do a sudo OVS VSCT OFCTL, and uh, I think it's the L1. Oh, yeah. So these are like uh, commands used by OVS to dump the open flow rules on the underlay network fabric. Uh, you see there are a lot of flows here, but uh, what will interest you is these flows here, right? So where we configure uh, which port packet is coming in from, what are the match criteria, and then how the packet should go out, right? This is the actual traffic steering I was talking about, where we can use, I can say, commodity hardware on the, on the fabric side with open flow support, and we can actually dust the traffic engineering using open daylight, really, right? So essentially, with support of open flow 1.3 we have, we have much more control. 1.0 has a little bit control, but 1.3 has much more control on that. So it's, for all of us, it's very difficult to read these flows to understand. So for that, we have this nice UI. <laughs> this one is a three-dimensional DNA-structured UI uh, that uh, uh, 
uh, it's called Hyperglance, right? It's a, it's a commercially available product on top of Open Daylight and OpenStack, really. They talk the, the uh, this uh, Hyperglance talk not one API to the controller, both OpenStack and Open Daylight, and it can extract data. So here, as you can see here, it has extracted data out of, so here it's showcasing only the uh, underlay. So we, we can configure, uh, uh, whether it show the entire, picture, entire UI or just the underlay, but here I chose only the underlay to make sure we, now we, we, are, we are on track. And here, as you, can, as you can see here, we have the bronze and silver policies right here. So we click on bronze, you see the traffic is actually taking the, the bronze path, the red highlighted one, uh, stating that, hey, if the traffic for, for a, uh, a Coke wants to send, they will, they will actually take this bronze path where least, you know, SLA is like shortest path, doesn't care about cost, it's just going to keep forwarding it there. Uh, but if we do the silver path, the silver path takes a different path altogether there, right? So it actually, the UI actually takes the flow from the actual running uh, open flow rules, stitches them together, and forms a nice picture out here. Uh, so as you can see here, right, uh, it just demonstrates that from 192, 168, 56, 101, which is not a host actually, it is actually the tunnel endpoint on a compute node, and one, some 52, 102, right, because from a, from an underlay standpoint, fabric standpoint, it doesn't care about the actual VM that's running inside the uh, overlay because it doesn't have visibility into it. That's why you see the tunnel endpoint as the actual endpoint here, while overlay is running on top of that, right? So those who are network op operators who understand this overlay idea, right? It's a, it's a very common problem where the traffic is actually on the overlay network while we have to traffic engineer the underlay, right? So this is exactly what we are, sh we are showing here that, hey, we can do that. Uh, it is just an, it's just an idea, right? We are doing traffic steering here, uh, but as you can imagine, we are going to work on the DHCP course and how to do much more interesting ones just by this, this overall picture, overall idea of what we can do with Open Daylight and OpenStack in tandem. Uh, and all these are open source, right? None of them is closed, everything is open source. So you can try it today, in fact. Uh, uh, so, in, in my case, I, I spent at least half an hour to put the demo together just before the talk. Uh, I couldn't do the live creating these uh, policies and everything because we don't have much time. Uh, so, if you have a question, you can stop by to the open delayed booth we have where we'll be running this demo starting tomorrow. And you guys can ask questions, deep questions if you have on the demo. With that, I'm done. Yeah, we can ask questions now. So I am Prakash, and I am from Huawei. The question to you is, what happens if your underflow stitching uh, breaks, and your uh, overlay doesn't know about the uh, stitching break? Uh -huh. Will it not make things horrible for a carrier or for a SDN operator? Uh, and how do you address that? I'll take it, but I will leave it to others to talk, right? Uh, at least in open daylight case, that's the power of the demonstration we gave here, where we have the visibility to underlay and overlay, right? So the question that you asked is very generic about overlay itself, right? Not about open daylight or open stack or anything, but it's a, it's a good question where... No, no, it is specific to open daylight. Okay. How do you address? You say you automate everything top to over, from overlay to underlay, uh -huh. and uh, underlay you have got an OBS switch where you got flow tied together. And right. I, as, I, as of today, I know, Havana, if you reboot, uh, the whole, all of that numbering which is there in the chain is broken. And then you have to tie from top to the bottom. Right. And that stitching has to be same. Or otherwise, I'll have something flowing from VM1, which was intended for VM2, go into VM4. That's the situation I am trying to see. How do you address this? Sure. Uh, uh, so. Uh, I can go deeper in this one if you want. If you want to discuss about how do we do the actual programming, right? We can definitely take it to the booth. I will give you a lot of information on that. But what I want to give a short idea of this one is, the controller itself provides all the capabilities. It's an app that is actually doing the tra traffic stitching, right? The question that you asked is actually about the policy app that we have, how we are managing this one, right? So, to give a short example of this port number. The open flow port number is not is transient across reboots, and that's why we don't use port numbers. We use the logic logical identity which will does that, which does it for us. And I will let others talk also here, right? You guys? Yeah. Uh, so, 
I don't know if it's on. Uh, like practically speaking, though, uh, our neutron integration, you know, we're, we're not dealing with hardware. We're, we're for the most part today, we're, you know, we're, we're just having a routed fabric with overlays on top of it. So, I mean, this is like Madhu said, this is just an app. This is kind of showing uh, some of the added value. Um, you know, personally, everything we're developing is uh, totally overlay focused. Um, this is just part of, I mean, at some point you have to tie in the underlay in some form or fashion. This is just an example of one, uh, the power of kind of having an app, having an abstraction uh, in between the data path and the control. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hi. Um, just about something you said earlier at way at the beginning of the talk. Uh, you said that you just now are implementing, integrating with IP tables, uh, OVS with IP tables. So if my understanding is correct, you don't support security groups today? You are. Yeah, correct. Uh, so, and the main reason is before we only had OpenFlow 1.3. So with OpenFlow 1.3, with the OpenFlow spec, you don't have any TCP flag awareness. So it's really hard to do services without knowing you know, any form or fashion of state. Uh, so to address that, we're, we're working on NXM extensions, so we have TCP flag. Um, you know, so with that, we can now kind of look at SINs, we can look at SINAX and uh, do policy that's proactively instantiated rather than reactively instantiated. instantiated. Okay, so I, I, actually I don't, I don't quite follow. So you're, you're relying on OpenFlow to implement security groups, is that it, instead of sort of having it sort of out of band on the side? Yeah, so it's being instantiated out of band over the OpenFlow channel uh, using OpenFlow 1.3 and Nasira. So instead of installing it into IP tables and, you know, in a process that's kind of outside the traditional network pipeline, we're just kind of integrating it. We think there's some value there. Okay, thank you. Sure, absolutely. And if you have any interest on the project, come work on it with us. Good stuff. Yeah. Yes, uh, so I'm Thomas. I'm the Debian maintainer for OpenStack. So I've got two small questions. One, are you working on NF table support? And second, can you describe, the second one is very easy, I believe. Can you describe what makes a f flavor for a network, what kind of option and parameters there is? I'll take second one. First one, I'll leave it to the forum here, right? Okay. Uh, the flavor is an app that uh, we created like in, in a week's time for demonstration really to showcase what we can do. Uh, today, as you, as you know, right, Flavor, we are using the, the policy engine that we have. Uh, the policy app that we implemented, the way it is done is, uh, we can, the customer can provide any property he wants to, and the property can be applied on these links, the, the underlay links, and the property can be managed via the outbound APIs, and uh, it can be anything, it can be a dollar cost, it can be, you know, uh, bandwidth, latency, or whatever it can be on, on, on a given, based on link property, and the Flavors can apply on the property. So that's an, ex that's an example app, right? So now we can start thinking about. So like, for example, for flavor, you can define how much bandwidth you have in the, in the LAN or right. the outside? Yeah, you can do that as well. Okay. Yeah, so m my point is the flavors app makes use of the existing open data Light infrastructure support. And since the open data Light has the full control over the under underlying fabric, <laughs> you, can, you can start manipulating, look at the network as a resource, you can think about all the resources in the network can be part of Flavors app. Can potentially be. It could be latency, it could be you know, uh, time of the day, it could be uh, cost, whatever it, whatever it want to be. QoS, whatever, yeah. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, and about NF tables support. Uh, is it planned or have you started working on that? Is it NetFlow table or? NF tables I has the, the make, you know we have IP tables now. Yeah. And the uh, Linux kernel is now bringing a new API after changing from IP chain and now IP tables. The next one is NF tables. No, not that I'm out of. Outside of just NF, uh, in the OV Open vSwitch project, there's some work uh, by Justin Pettit on using Contractor out of the kernel to get state awareness. So we're kind of tracking that. We're trying to really keep things native to Linux. So whatever makes sense, we're open to. Um, we we kind of like the idea of consolidating as much as we can into the data path. So we'll definitely uh, come talk to us about it. We'd love to talk about it. Thanks. We got probably yeah. one more. Hi, I'm Kesho from HP. Uh, I have three questions. Uh, you said uh, you need to have full mesh in the, in the underlay network. So when it is a full mesh, uh, 
uh, how do you guarantee uh, the all the bandwidths are uh, utilized on all the interfaces? So that's the first question. If it is based on the SPO for the least cost. Second question is, uh, how do you make sure uh, that uh, since it's a central entity, ODL may be a central entity, and whatever the path calculation or the graph calculation happens as a central entity, whereas in the in the real world, it, uh, every node used to do the the path calculation and the computation. So, being a central entity, how do you guarantee that uh, the what, whatever is calculated is the what is actually reflected in the real network? Because compared to the uh, the existing network, the graph used to calculate being each node being the root, and uh, the graph used to be given to the CSPF, and based on that, RSVP has to be applied, and that's how it used to be. But now, since there is no uh, distributed routing and it's a central routing, so how the how do you make sure that all of the paths have been equally utilized? Okay, so the question that you ask is very generic about underlay, right? Not nothing to the overlay or, or, or yeah. neutron, no. right? So let's take this question to the booth, if you don't mind, because we are running out of time and we have a few more questions. Being very generic about underlay, we'll take it in the booth, if you don't mind. We, we're out of time. So. Yeah, we're also out of, out of time. Right, sorry, we'll take it in the booth. But you are with HP, and two you're gonna bring that to us. Yeah, I... <laughs> we have two minutes, guys, yeah. One more. One more. Uh, One more question, this yeah. This is Ajay from EMC. Uh, so wondering if you can uh, shed some light on the performance aspect of the open daylight controller. I take it that in a large scale network, you might need like a distributed cluster, and what kind of performance can it handle? Sure, the, the hydrogen release, uh, we didn't do performance testing much, really. Okay. But open daylight controller has the clustering support already, where we can have a cluster of many controllers working together. And it supports active-active as well. So we can actually split the network into multiple small pieces, and each controller can handle its own piece. And they talk to each other using infinite span and exchange nodes, yeah. But we haven't done performance evaluation to figure out how much really the performance for a single controller yet. All right? All right. So last one, last question. Yeah, thank you. I, I, sorry. I think you might have kind of answered part of my question because his question is very close. But I, on the one hand, I understand the attraction of open flow and software-defined networking. On the other hand, I'm reading a lot of stuff that there's no real industrial implementation of that yet and that there will be huge problems when that takes place. I, and so my, it's kind of a performance question. H have you, I, has anybody installed this industrially? Do you? envision problems when it happens? I can give one example, and Dave can do the rest, right? Example, today, if you look at Neutron and OpenStack, it is using OpenFlow on the edges, right? If you can't be from wrong. The OBS today uses OpenFlow to program their paths and everything, right? OK. Uh, that's simple answer that I can give. Hey, it's not true, but I can let. Uh, so, so there's kind of two parts to your question, right? Um, what happens in the data plane and what happens in the control plane, right? Yeah. And, and so in the data plane, the theory is that you should be able to do something that looks like line rate forwarding as, as long as you have enough flow entries in whatever flow cache you have, right? Sure. Um, the other, s and, and actually, that usually turns out to be the case. That's not where performance bottlenecks come from. Now, on the other hand, if you're talking about um, the control plane, then there's all the issues that Madhu just mentioned with sort of distributed controllers. And you know, there's some physics too, because if you have reactive, like if you have a reactive model, right? You know the reactive model? I, I'm not that familiar, no. Okay, so a packet comes to the switch, and the switch doesn't have a flow entry that covers it. So okay. it punts it to the controller, the controller figures out what to do, and writes flow entries along the path at once. That's reactive, right? Okay. That, of course, has scaling properties that, we, that aren't the greatest, right? Yeah, it makes sense. And so, in general, when people have, um, you know, production installations, they do uh, proactive flow installation. Okay, so that's a, okay. Okay, so that would be very helpful in that case. I guess I've, I, I've so I probably I'm like the last question. Maybe I'll take it to the booth. I had a couple others. Yeah, that'd be good. Let it go. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Hey, okay. thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.